Hey, hey, party people. I know I already have a fur tutorial, but I have gotten several requests, request, requests, requests <laughs> across various uh, videos on how to do the white version of rendering various textures because rendering the white version can present itself with its own challenges so here we go because it's the holidays and maybe you want to do a christmas themed holiday card with a beautiful santa or a mrs claus on it let's do some white fur today all right now when it comes to rendering any type of fur it starts with the drawing okay fur is fat and fur is hairy and so we cannot just start off by drawing it like you would any other fabric for of all you draw it kind of away from the body okay I mean sure there are some really thin furish materials out there but that's not what you're making a Santa suit out of that's not what you're making a beautiful luxurious you know anything out of and you know before you get on me about sustainability I got it okay I got it but number one we're just drawing these things number two there is they are currently developing technology to make fur out of fibers that are not plastic. So cross your fingers, maybe a couple years after this video comes out, we will have that fur. <laughs> yeah, if you saw me wearing a fur uh, in my social media, trust me, it is older than I am. All right, so first of all, let's, let's say we're doing like a big collar. You want it to stand away from the body and make sure it's got that full luxurious feeling. Okay, when I talk about drawing clothes on bodies, you know, there are some things where you can kind of push the envelope on how oversized, big, luxurious it looks to really sell the look. And like a fur collar is one of them, you know, bring it up to the chin, make it wide, make it fat. Okay, and I'm drawing it really light. I might be drawing it a little bit thicker uh, so that the camera can pick it up, but Let's say you have a thinner fur for the cape and it's still away from the body and let's say you know you have this big fur trim and I'm keeping it really light because fur has a broken outline broken line outline okay the edges are not typically not long and smooth but just they do have some Make sure all your fur hairs are going in one direction, okay? Just hairs going this way and hairs going that way. Okay, number one, that's the best way to find out if your fur is fake. Number two, it just looks messy. Like even if this was a photo shoot, like a good stylist would make sure the fur is like laying smooth and all in one direction before photographs are taken, okay? Now let's do the red of the cape and let's make sure that we are keeping that broken line edge. We're not going to smooth it over with like a red solid line. And let's say the shadow is coming from over here. All right. Let's talk about grays, okay? Because obviously you're gonna shade the white with grays. There are many gray options to choose from, okay? This is N4, okay? The N, the neutral or natural uh, gray series in the Copic series is the one I'm going to use today. It's neutral, it, it tips a little cool, but I think it's a very clean look for white fur. 
okay and I think it really works well with the red so you have to also think about whatever is going on along with the white to kind of inform what kind of gray you want to use this is W4 warm 4 and it has a green undertone and it looks a little bit dirty it's got like khaki undertones and it totally works in some scenarios but I think it would end up making this white fur look dirty so ditching that this is the cool series of Copic this is C4 and it bends even cooler than the N4 of course that's the name cool and this could also be the cool series could also be a nice option for the bright white fur okay um and then we have this is Prismacolor warm gray which is real different okay it's got a red purpley undertone and this might work really well for some other fur situations or other shading situations but I don't I think it'll attract too much attention I think it's too colorful for it to read like a white shadow okay so that's why I'm going with N4 the the natural series All right. Another thing to think about is everyone thinks that you're going to want the lightest gray ever to shadow white. And uh, the lightest one are zeros. And I think I even have a double zero in the Copic series. Wait, that's not it. <laughs> this is N0. And once it dries, it's really not going to show up at all whatsoever. Okay. This is N1. Okay. And this would be a first shadow for me, but that's not where I would end it. When I, am when I am testing shadow colors, I always swatch directly on top because it's going to be how it looks together. That's the point, okay? So I always layer them if I'm going to be using it for a shadow color. And this is N3. I mean, you might think that's pretty dark, but I think it'll work. Always shadow the texture of the hair. Long shaggy hair, short fine hair, okay? Gonna be a little bit sh shaded on the bottom because it's rolling down. I'm just going to go back and blend some of this out because it's a soft, blurry fur and not a crisp, shaggy fur. Make sure you don't bring that red into the space, otherwise it really will contaminate the white. And now we're going to go in and bring in some pencil to really render the white. Here's the thing with white anything is you kind of have to like almost over render, be extra detailed because if you have a predominantly white outfit and you don't make sure that the details really pop, then it looks unfinished. Okay. It looks like, oh, you did it marker.
So what I like to do is I like to make sure that in the dark areas of shadow that my pencil is really dark to emphasize the shadow areas. If you want to put a little bit of texture in here, that's okay. Like so. If you had something really shaggy, you know, really bring it into the silhouette and bring it into the shadow. Oh no, this is the warm. I don't want that. Okay. And make the shagginess. into the shadow as well so you're really bringing that texture okay some people what they like to do is especially i mean this one it's got so much red in it it's okay but sometimes uh, you can put in a black drop shadow behind the figure to really bring it and lift it off the page you know, if I were doing this pregnant figure and there's my light source and she was wearing a white dress, you know, you could just sort of do like a big, black, curvy, beautiful, watch your line quality, drop shadow behind it to emphasize it. That is something you could do. Another thing you can do when you're doing a lot of white is to paint on colored paper. So let's do that. And just have some random gray cans on paper today. Now, listen, I have white gouache. Gouache is opaque watercolor. Using regular watercolor, a lot of water, it's not gonna go through, it's not gonna cover the color. So that would be kind of pointless. Like, if you have a lot of water with a white watercolor, that's, it will not help you, <laughs> okay? So make sure you're using something really opaque, you're using gouache, and that you're keeping your, you shouldn't use a dry brush unless it's a brush you don't care about. Like, I do have those. Like, this one is an old busted uh oil brush that i don't care about because it's cheap and the whole point is for it to look scraggly okay but this is a silver black velvet brush that i use for fashion illustration so i do wet it but then i typically take squeeze out a lot of the water to get as dry and opaque an appearance as I can okay now having said that a round brush isn't really great for our purposes like fur trim fur texture I do like something like this And you see how we have this nice soft on the outside. So if you recall from my previous fur tutorial, I said that 
The color can be a little bit hazy on the edges because that is how fur works is it's denser in the middle and as it spreads out along the edges, it becomes less opaque. And so if it's a little bit hazy on the edges, especially the corners, that's fine because that is how fur behaves. Now, and this is just on a dry, bristly, cheap oil brush a flat one, not a round one. And uh, I'm gonna just let that be and wait to put in any shadows. This is a brush I picked up, oh, I think in Poland, I think, and it's super cool looking. So that's fun. Not necessary, but fun if you're an art supplies addicted geek like I am. But again, really keep the water minimal. If you want to use dry media, color pencil and charcoal pencil are decent options. And I have found that some of the most opaque whites are for color pencil are the Caran d'Ache Luminance 6901 series and the Prismacolor Premier. And so, you know, like maybe you want to do a pom pom. And all the hairs go to a tip. And then you have like a string, right? If you are drawing on gray, you know, you can apply like the opposite method in shading where you leave the gray of the paper to peek through for the shadows as opposed to applying shadows. So if this is your light source, you start adding more white here. and leaving the shaded areas. But that only works if your background paper color is the color you want your shadows to be. This is charcoal and it's more opaque than color pencil. And easier to smudge. That's an option. Again, shadow in the texture of your fur. This is just a dry like brush with absolutely nothing and I'm just fading out some of the color while still kind of keeping the texture. And here's a clean wet brush to soften some of the edges. All right. And those are some ways to render white fur. That's a little bit different from just rendering fur in general. I'll drop the fur tutorial link below and uh, drop me all your video requests in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.